Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to quickly talk about the Apps tab in Dream Factory. So Dream Factory is really nice because it lets you have as many applications as you want. So you can think about it as a platform for managing a bunch of applications. These applications can access data, they can access APIs that you set up in Dream Factory. And so it's one place where you can uh, kind of set up everything that you need to use. And it supports a bunch of different types of applications. So in the Apps tab, the Manage uh, sub-tab here just has a list of all of the applications. When you first install the product, you'll see three. You'll see the Admin, Swagger, and File Manager. And you can always add more applications, which we'll show here. You can delete applications here, and you can launch them by hitting the Play button. So here we just launched the Swagger user interface for looking at all of our APIs that we've configured in Dream Factory. So that's pretty straightforward. You can also download the sample applications here. Uh, which we talked about in the other home tutorial. Click on these and that will go to GitHub. And this provides an address book application that makes it really easy to learn how to use Dream Factory with some practical uh, examples to get started. You can toggle between different views as well. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Pretty easy. Now to create an application, just go to the Create tab, put in a name, description. You'll get an API key when you save. Uh, click, click to create your application and save it. You can make apps active or deactivate them if you want to. And there are a bunch of different varieties or types of applications, right? So you might have a mobile application. Let's say you're building an Android app. You don't need any storage required. It's just running on a remote device. So you would select that option. You can use a provisioned file storage service. So basically, with Dream Factory, there's a local file storage system. Or if you hooked up, let's say, Amazon S3, that would show up in this list. So wherever you want to run that. And then you give it a, a folder name for where the app will actually reside in the folder structure, and then a launch path. And then that will uh, show you the URL by which you can launch the application. There's also the notion of a default role. So users have roles in the system, but if you don't assign any roles, there will be a default role. And that governs what uh, APIs and what data this particular application can access. So you can have many roles. If this was like an address book app for iOS, I would just select that and that would be the default role uh, that that application would have. There's a few other options here. Uh, you can run on a web server. So on this web server where Dream Factory is running, put in a path. You can also run a remote URL. So this is interesting if you just want to run your app on your own server and enable cores access, which you can do very easily. You can whitelist a server and then just hit Dream Factory's API endpoint. So Dream Factory can run actually independently of where you're actually physically running your application as well. So those are all options. You can also import applications. So this is a great way to get started. If you wanted to import, let's say, the AngularJS example uh, here for the address book, this will go and get it from GitHub. And then I'll just go do this. So I'll put it in the local file storage system and just import that. And that will momentarily show up as imported. So now when I go back to my list here, I'll have the address book for Angular show up in the list. So that's all there really is to importing. Pretty simple. Lastly, there's the notion of groups. Um, this, all this is is for organizing uh, applications into groups, if you want to put them into particular groups. So an example is, let's say you have a bunch of marketing applications for marketing people in your company. You could create a marketing group, and then you can select which applications uh, appear in that. Now, the purpose of this is there's the administrative interface, there's also the launchpad interface. So users who are non-administrators basically can go to this URL or wherever the URL is that you've deployed Dream Factory, and they will see a list of applications, and they will only see the applications that they have access to in the role system. So you can kind of group these together if you want to use that place to launch. So it's really kind of up to you, but this is a way of kind of providing a dashboard where you can group applications together. That's all that the... Uh, the uh, groups uh, does in the system. So that's it, a quick intro to the apps tab. Um, hopefully this is helpful. This is a really good way to get started and then we'll cover a bunch more uh, capabilities in the other tutorials uh, on YouTube. Thanks.